That's why I never go undercover. It would stand out too much. <laughs> what about you? Gadget trick. Oh, show me something. We can't. Well, go on. Who am I going to tell? Well, the jacket can't hurt. OK. Put this on. Now turn the collar button clockwise. That alerts me that you're live, and I can follow you from any computer terminal. So? Say something. What? Tell us a joke. There's this bloke who wants to join the Foreign Legion. <gasps> That's amazing! Even the Americans aren't as advanced as we are on this. The tiny microphones are literally stitched into the fabric, undetectable to ordinary security. The central problematic was adjusting the frequency range of the modulating code so that it could deal with the generating capacity of the microprocessing unit. You done? She's done very well. Great. Send me that image. I want to cross-match it with some faces. I'm, I'm not sure. Shouldn't we wait for Harry and Adam? Before he went for his meeting with the Home Secretary, Harry gave me level one clearance, all right? So just send me the image of the bomber. Thanks. The team is shattered. I'm going to have some camp beds put down to start the sleep mode. Good idea. Now, we've had luck as well as hard work so far, and the luck can't hold out forever. And when they finished counting more bodies, the Home Secretary will be the first to resign. I wouldn't normally shed a tear for a politician, but it's the first decent one we've had in some time. We have to uncover the mole, otherwise we're never going to find these bombs. And given the recent attacks on every member of our team so far, we're going to lose someone which we can ill afford. You wanted to see me? Yeah. Yeah, it was you that called over the tip-off about going to the warehouse, wasn't it? Yeah. There's something wrong. No, no. Who instructed you to call me? Juliet Shaw. We can't let this continue. Who are you working for? Are you completely insane? You're a traitor. You tried to lure me to the warehouse so they could kill me. What are you talking about? I just passed on a tip given to me by Special Branch. Who in Special Branch? Oh, I don't know. You tried to blackmail me, Juliet. You wanted to raise your clearance so you could continue to sabotage our operation. Oh, come on, Harry. It's not like you've never used dirty tricks to get where you are. It was professional competition between two people with more secrets than that in their past. Oh. Or, or didn't he tell you that? He mentioned lapses in judgment. Just tell us who the bomber is and where they'll strike next, and we might be able to cut you a deal. Better than the deal I already have? You couldn't possibly match it. What's your deal? Well, this bombing offensive is part of a carefully coordinated military-industrial Zionist corporate conspiracy designed to terrify the public and persuade them the need to invade. Well, pick any Middle East country of your choice. And the deal is that I'll be rewarded by being made head of a large multinational. Oh, for Christ's sake, any simpleton with a politics A-level could have come up with that one. Do you honestly think I could be part of a plot to bomb my own country, Harry? Do you honestly think that? I don't know what your motives are, Juliet, but you can't blackmail me anymore. I've told the Home Secretary everything, and I've resigned. Resign? Oh, Harry. <laughs> so brilliant in so many ways, and you... <laughs> Do you really think that's what I wanted? We don't have time for these games! Somewhere, another bomber's being planted. Just tell us who the bomber is. All right. I was going to tell you. The bomber is a man named Owen Foster. And that conclusion is based on the image produced by the waitress you dragged in here. And by spending the entire night going back through records and doing the kind of legwork that should have been done by more junior staff. And you call me a traitor again at your considerable peril, Mr. Carter! We cross-matched the image Natasha Scott produced to this one. Owen Foster. He started life in animal liberation. He didn't care that much for the cause, but came obsessed with planting bombs. He's rather like one of those Nazis who calculated people to cattle truck ratio. Anyway, he bailed to the States when we got too close to him. Where he met Monroe? Uh-huh. 
Shining Dawn is the perfect vehicle for him, given their emphasis on civilian casualties. pulled Foster in just before the bombing campaign started over there. But he was released because, astonishingly, he wasn't considered to be a serious threat by the interrogating officer. Want to know something interesting? Go on. That very same officer is currently helping us with our own investigations. I got you in for this job because I trusted you. I've never let you down before. Still, to err is human to forgive divine. Curtis will not remember you for seeing for a second in one meeting. Could be right, Joe. Could be right. I still need to know where they've taken him now. I'll deal with it when you get me the new address. I'm sorry to hear about the French girl. Are you and you're from back home? She's gone. See, what I was hoping to achieve in employing you for this one quite simple mission was reducing the number of people able to link me to Shining Dawn. You'd agree that's a reasonable course of action, right? Sure. Good. seen somebody. Sorry? A man I'd seen before. You've seen someone in the building who you also saw when you met Monroe? Uh, and I think so. Well, how can you be sure? I'm not, but I do have an excellent memory. He was wearing a suit and he didn't say anything. If you're right, then he'd certainly want you dead. You could ID him. Monroe would never have approved my murder. Well, that's all rather academic now, isn't it? Because someone has tried to kill you twice. How do I know what he's doing here? I don't know who to believe anymore. I, I don't want anything more to do with this. You wrote the books from which Shining Dawn drew their inspiration. Time for you to take some responsibility. Come on, we'll go back and look for him. Adam, it's Ruth. It sounds weird, I know, but um, Professor Curtis thinks he's just seen somebody in the building he recognises. Somebody from Shining Dawn. Is this the man you saw at your meeting with Monroe? Oh, it's terribly hard to say. It's, it's not as if we were actually introduced. Where's your excellent memory gone? Professor Curtis. You've had the luxury of working with my colleague for the last 24 hours. She's even sent people back to check your cat has sufficient water, overruling my suggestion that we introduce its tail to a plug socket. Think very carefully about your next answer. Yes, that's him. Let's find him. He's still in the building. We're picking up the chip in his visitor's pass. Should be coming through the pods now. Where's Richard Boyd? Can't make a phone call. 